What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video, and I like making these types of videos, they're short to the point, defensively, not giving you guys a whole base or a whole long thing you have to digest, but a quick video on some little techniques you should be using in your base. We often talk about, okay, keep your queen separate from, you know, your eagle maybe, or your town hall away from your infernos. We talk about things to keep separate, but what pairs work? Uh, defensively at Town Hall 12, 11, 10. I mean, these are very broad uh, ideas, but there's certain pairs of defensive buildings and traps that work well together, and you want to look to pair these up. So we're going to go over, I think, six examples of that in this video very quickly, and these will help you when building your base, you put these things together. This is a big one recently I've been doing, and I've seen other people do it as well especially Town Hall 12, especially Town Hall 12, but this works for other Town Hall levels as well. Typically, your Teslas on the outside of your base, put a Skelly Trap by this, um, and you can do two Teslas as well. This is a very effective thing when people are using a P.E.K.K.A. to funnel, um, the Skeleton Trap will just stop that P.E.K.K.A. dead, because oftentimes the P.E.K.K.A. will go up, it'll one-shot the Tesla, it'll, you know, one-shot, I think, almost an Archer Tower, maybe not quite an Archer Tower, um, but it'll just tear through these buildings. The Skelly Trap will basically make it useless. It'll take away half its health if you have multiple defenses raining in on the P.E.K.K.A. as it has to deal with the skeletons. So if people are going to use a P.E.K.K.A. funnel somewhere on your base, you don't have to be a, you know, a genius to figure out where people are going to be making funnels with P.E.K.K.A.s. Um, put Tesla th there and put the Skelly Traps there. You can really mess up some attacks. Um, oops, I don't know where that came from. Uh, Next one is the Eagle and the Air Skeleton. Now this is especially good um, if you have your Queen near your Eagle. Obviously this is only for Town Hall 11 and 12. The um, reason being, people often are going to try to use an Electron attack on you or some kind of, there's multiple variations, sometimes they throw electro, electro Dragons of their own behind a Slammer, sometimes they clone them, whatever the case may be. Um, it's always targeting the eagle and the queen, pretty much. So it's okay if your eagle is near your queen, and that's often going to be the case, but having just one of these can take an entire shot uh, from an e-dragon, and that'll really slow things down and give your queen and other defenses time to take out those e-dragons. So I like having two ground skellies kind of guarding my Teslas on the outside of the base, wherever that may be, and then one air skelly by the eagle. Um, this one... Uh, might isn't quite as cut and dry, but I think it's generally a good idea to have the red air bombs near multi infernos. This is just anti lalo. If there's no air defenses nearby, you don't have to worry about the lava hounds soaking these guys up. Um, go ahead and put them next to your multi inferno because the balloons are already going to be kind of slowly taken down by the multi inferno. It's more of a splash damage type defense, like a wizard tower. So putting these red air bombs next to the Inferno is a good idea. Now you can put them next to Wizard Towers as well, but people are more likely to try to soak those up by having a Lava Hound pass by. Um, they're more likely to be next to an air defense. The Infernos, you have some more flexibility, and they tend to be a little more isolated. So use that to your advantage. Put red air bombs there, or also in other locations, kind of as uh, you see based on testing and based on how the Lalo pathing would work in theory. Um, simple one, not going to spend too much time on it. This is basically for mass hog attacks or mass lalo attacks where the attacker tries to use a skeleton spell to take out your queen. Um, putting the bomb tower, at least one of them near her, will help defend against that. Um, preferably on the back end, if the hogs are going to come from this end, you want your bomb tower where it currently is instead of over here because they'll take out the bomb tower uh, kind of as they get the queen and then bomb tower dies, then they'll start to take out the queen. Uh, this makes it tricky because the uh, the queen could easily come back and range the bomb tower, but it's not that important. Just put the bomb tower near the queen is the idea. And also, it doesn't just do this the damage, the splash damage, but when it dies, it explodes. It can kill uh, more skeletons as well. Um, is this our last one? No, we got two more. Uh, this one is, I think, more of a lower, like Town Hall 9, 10-ish, but once again, it can apply to lots of different situations. For hogs, typically you're wondering, where do I put my giant bombs? Um, you want to put them where the attacker doesn't want to have to use a heal spell. 
I think if you have expos that are relatively isolated, that's not always the case, but if you have an expo that kind of is on its own island or something similar, put the giant bomb there because it's going to force a very awkward heal and the expos are high in hit points so the hogs will not get through this very quickly unless there's a ton of them meaning that they'll be outside that heal for a longer period of time so giant bombs are good next to high uh, hit point buildings that happen to be relatively isolated if it's just next to an archer tower the hogs will take it out so quickly they'll probably come back in for the heal spell uh, before they can actually get taken out and the giant bomb can do anything all right last one this one i've touched on before but i want to reiterate this um, Wizard Tower Mortar, what's going on here is, I mean, like we're saying that this is the outside of the base over here, you have your storages, then the inside of the base is like in here with the sweeper and everything. Um, basically, for defending bat spell, whether it's a drag bat, which might become more popular since the dragon buff, I hope it does, I'm a big fan, um, or a P.E.K.K.A. bow bat, you don't want your wizard tower to be able to be tanked by an ice golem, that'll save the attacker from having to use one, maybe even two freeze spells. So uh, you want to put these mortars out here so if they drop an ice golem, they're kind of stuck. Like they, uh, they, the ice golem will not get in range of the wizard tower. The wizard tower will be free to take out bats. This might require doing it on multiple sides, but oftentimes if you just have like a single mortar that's like in this location, um, that's all you need. If the wizard tower is on a corner, you might have to consider having two mortars or maybe a cannon or something out there as well but I'd say most wizard towers you want this built in not every wizard tower is necessary most of the time but especially if you think you're weak against bats don't give them that free ice golem tank and if you're an attacker this is a quick side note going above and beyond here if you're an attacker don't be afraid to use balloons uh, if the mortar is very exposed and the pathing goes in mortar to wizard tower directly especially in a drag bat attack don't be afraid to use a few balloons to come in there and also don't be afraid to use uh, if the pathing will go once again for a ground troop from mortar to wizard tower, don't be afraid to put down the ice golem followed by a hog, uh, which will take out the mortar, then the ice golem will advance to the wizard tower if you're willing to invest a little bit more troop space um, to avoid having to use a freeze, because sometimes you're tight on spells, not as much on troop space. Okay, that's pretty much it. Hope this video helped. Um, Good luck with base building, as I often do in my base building videos, a shout out to my Patreon, um, because there when you donate to the channel, you get perks, a lot of them related to base building, such as a uh, custom war base every month, or two depending on your level, as well as um, base feedback, and then you also get some attacking advice if you post bases that you are going to attack soon, you get some feedback on your plans. So check that out if you're interested, and thanks for watching this one, I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.